In this module, we're going to do a configuration walkthrough and we're going to configure an after record on the Big IP. So there are several things that we're going to do um, and there are some things that we are not going to do. Um, you'll see up here in the upper left hand corner the to do or the blue and the done are things that I've already configured that you should already know how to do. Configuring A records and quad A records, they're just like previously, you just have to um, put in um, the type. So I'm not going to spend my time showing you how to do those. Instead, we're going to configure the SRV record. Well, first we're going to configure the SRV pool. Then we're going to configure the wide IP to use that. We're then going to use that wide IP in the NAPTER pool here associated with the NAPTER record. And in the NAPTER record, we're going to use that SRV pool, that SRV wide IP, and we're going to use one of our A or a wide IP that's just a straight A and quad A wide IP so that we can see both types in this NAPTER pool. And then we're going to associate that NAPTER pool with an example.com NAPTER record. So let's switch over to the Big IP console and take a look at what we're going to do. So we're going to go to the DNS menu. Um, we're going to first off create that NAPTER pool, or, or I'm sorry, that SRV pool. So I need to create a new pool and we will call it SRV underscore pool. And you'll see right off that I need to select a type for this pool to be. So we're going to choose SRV. And then we are going to go down here. We'll leave, leave the defaults for the configurations. Um, actually, let's go ahead and, and do this to two. We'll just leave the same load balancing method. And down here, you can see that we need to choose some wide IPs um, to put into this pool. So we're going to put sip.udp.example.com as the wide IP we're going to use. We'll keep the priority weight. Um, we need, do need to fill in the port, which we're going to put as, as 1560. We'll go ahead and add that. And you can see that once we define that as a pool member, the priority, the weight, the port, and the ratio are all um, associated with this SRV pool. And those are configurations that you need for SRV records. So let's go ahead and click finished on that. So that pool is right here. You can see where the SRV pool is. Um, you can see the type listed right beside it. We're now going to go to wide, the wide IP list and we're going to add our SRV our, or our underscore, let's see, underscore SIP .udp.example.com is what we're going to use. Once again, we need to add that SRV record there. Um, we're going to not do any I rules in this particular one. We're going to leave the load balancing method the same. And when I look at these pools, you'll notice that I can choose the SRV pool that I just created. And then I have these CNAME pools that also show up. So any wide IP can have a CNAME, no matter what its type, can have a CNAME pool associated with it in addition to pools of the type of the wide IP. So in this case, we're gonna use that SRV pool that we just um, created. We're going to go down here and click finished. And we can now see that that underscore SIP underscore UDP dot example dot com of type SRV has been added. So let's go back to our diagram here. We've created our SRV pool. Um, we added the SIP dot UDP dot example dot com as the member. And then we've created the wide IP step number two, that SRV wide IP. So next we're going to create the NAPTER pool and add some, some items to it. So I'm going to once again go back to the pools menu. I'm going to click create. I'm going to create a NAPTER pool. I'm going to need to set the, the type to NAPTER. Down here I'm going to keep the load balancing methods the same in this particular case. I'm going to select that I want to put in an SRV record. You'll notice that I could select A record, A for A record, or S for SRV record. This should only give me one wide IP to choose from because I only have a single SRV wide IP. Um, I'll set the service to, um, let's do this. This is a UDP. So this is the, the nomenclature for a SIP um, record saying that it's a SIP um, UDP virtual. We'll keep the order. Uh, let's say the, pre the preference for this one is 20 
and ratio is one. So we're gonna go ahead and add that and you'll see that record here in the NAFTA pool. We're then going to go and add a second record, an A record in this case, and you'll notice that we have all the different A records um, to choose from in this list. Let's go ahead and pick www.130.example.com. We'll check and see if that's the one I had listed. It is, so uh, we can add, in this case, maybe we'll say that this is a TCP SIP server, so I'm going to do the D2T to indicate that this is a TCP. I'll, I'll make this 101. We want to use um, UDP when we can. I'm going to add those and click finished. I now need to take that pool and add it to a wide IP. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click create, and I'm going to do just straight example.com. I'm going to set the type to NAPTER. I'm not going to do any I rules. I'll leave the load balancing as it is. On um, this pool here, once again, I can choose the NAPTER pool or I have the option to choose CNAME pools, but we're going to choose the NAPTER pool in this case and go ahead and add it. We'll click finished and we should now have a NAPTER. We should now have this configuration in place. We have our NAPTER example.com wide IP. We have a pool associated with it that has two members. These are two wide IPs that are members for the SIP underscore SIP underscore UDP wide IP. This is what the, form, the configuration for it. There's a pool associated with it, and there's an A and a quad A record um, associated with that SRV pool. So now we're gonna go to our command line on a box that we can use to query, and we will just go ahead and dig. Um, we're gonna use the dig command. I'm actually sourcing it from our particular IP address. In this case, example.com is what we're looking for. We're looking for a NAPTA record and we're looking on that particular um, GTM device. So you can see here that I sent the request and I got an answer back. I got that the NAPTA record is underscore SIP underscore UDP dot example dot com is the name that needs to be looked up to get additional information. So let's and we're, we're continuing to, and you'll notice that we're also getting the A record. It's alternating between those two um, in the responses that it is giving us. This is an example where the wide IP is configured so that it's doing a minimal response. So if we go back in to our um, big IP GTM and we look for that NAPTA record, let's go into that. And we'll see that we need to go to advanced and you'll see that minimal response is enabled on this particular um, wide IP. So we're gonna disable that and update it. And now let's go look and see what response we get now. So let me clear this. And if we do this now, look, we're getting um, example.com and we're getting the triple W130 but then it's going and doing some further, some further resolution. And the thing, the reason we're getting A and quad A records is because that that triple W one thirty dot example dot com has both an A and a quad A. So if I go one thirty here, you'll see that one thirty dot triple W one thirty dot example dot com has a quad A and an A record. We put that as an A record type entry in the NAPTER pool, but it is actually going to pull both of those um, when it responds to a query. And so let's go look. So we have changed it so that we're getting multiple responses, um, or we're getting, we're having the big IP GTM go ahead and recursively find answers to responses that it's giving, but we're not seeing all of the responses here um, we're, we're seeing the A record response and then there's the, the SIP response and you'll notice that the SIP underscore SIP underscore UDP dot example dot com, that's a wide IP you might recall and it, we just created it. The reason this one's already um, responding and giving us the full resolution, no, that's, that terminates right there. This one is a, a another wide IP that returns a name so we need to go 
and modify it if we want to see the full path for that. So let's go back in to our big IP. Let's go to the SIP underscore UDP dot example dot com. Once again, minimal response is enabled. We're going to disable that and update. And now if we go back to our um, terminal and we do a couple of questions, you'll see now there's that A record that's um, www.130.example.com. If we do it again, we should go back and we should get that SIP or this SRV record now, underscore SIP underscore UDP.example.com. And you'll see now that in the additional section, it's resolving that to sip.udp.example.com and then it's going down and giving us all the records. And in this case, once again, sip.udp.example.com is a wide IP name and we have both an A and a quad A um, entry for that. So we're getting answers for both of those. Let's go ahead back to our diagram and you can see that we've now completed our configuration and we sip.udp.example.com A and quad A responses and we were also seeing triple w130.example.com a and quad a responses in our configuration